Good morning. Welcome as we come together to worship and praise our Lord and Savior. It is the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, a couple, couple of Sundays, and uh, we're right back up into Ash Wednesday again. And you know, But as we come together, may we be lifted up, may we be given and restored to a hope that we have only in Jesus Christ. We come together this morning in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your dear, your dear Son, Jesus Christ, into this world to be our Lord and to be our Savior. We pray as we hear the Word of God that we would be lifted up. The Holy Spirit would work in our hearts and minds to strengthen us in our faith as we go forward, that we may walk on this earth and walk with you all the days of our lives and have that peace and joy that you give to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come before the Lord, we bring our sin to him. And you know, I'm going to read from Genesis 6-5. After mankind's fallen into sin, every inclination of his heart is toward evil. This seems a strong statement, but as we examine ourselves at this time, Ponder our thoughts, words, and deeds. Consider the words of Psalm 44, 21, which tells us that God knows the secrets of our heart. As you confess your sin of action and speech this past week, consider your thoughts concerning those around us. And how would God describe your heart? And take it to the Lord in prayer. Just take a moment for a silent reflection, confession, repentance, and prayer. Scriptures tell us that all fall sin, all sin and fall short of the glory of God. That's we, we just took to the Lord in prayer. But it also tells us that we are the free gift of God is forgiveness of sin by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. You are forgiven because of what Jesus did for you on the cross, in the resurrection, the empty grave, the tomb. Go in peace. In Jesus' name. Amen.
As we come before the Lord, we bow our hands for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you give us ears, and I pray now that you know, we would use our ears to hear your word, and listen to your word, and take it into our hearts and minds, and, and into our day-to-day -day life. Bless us, and lift us up, and give us that which only you can give to us, the forgiveness of sin, the free gift of everlasting life in heaven, and walk with us all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <coughs> Our text comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. and reads, <coughs> They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is our text. I entitled this sermon, The Interruption. And I think, you know, we all understand an interruption. We're, we're at home, we're having a nice dinner, and the phone rings. Uh, the doorbell rings. You're driving down the road, and you get a flat tire, and that's a really big interruption. Uh, you know, we, we don't like interruptions. Now, I'm going to say this, this text, as a preacher, the interruption that Jesus had that day is about the scariest dream I could have. You're preaching, and all of a sudden, from the pews, somebody challenges you. Now that's a fear. I, it is. It, it really is. I'm not, I'm not quick in the brain and everything else like some people. I mean, I work very hard to put a sermon together to be suddenly challenged and switching gears. I don't know if I could do it that well. Now, you, the congregation, you might say, well, this could be interesting. Uh, no, you start praying for me, just, just so you know. Um, you know, but here they are, you know, so let's, let's back up a little bit. I mean, things are happening. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, Jesus is baptized. He goes to the wilderness for 40 days, and, you know, he fasts, and Satan attacks him and tempts him and everything else. He comes out. John's in prison. He calls Peter, James, Andrew, and, and John, and they all become his apostles. And now he goes into the city of Capernaum. Uh, Peter lives there. Uh, you know, we'll get, you know, just, and Capernaum seems to be almost the place where Jesus sets up his headquarters. Um, it's right, it's on the northwest side or of the Sea of Galilee, so it's right on the, the sea coast. You know, a lot of fishermen probably live there and everything else. But it's kind of thought to be, you know, maybe one of the nicer town cities, bigger cities, in, in the whole area up there. It, it's kind of, you know, it's a nice town. Uh, maybe a side note, the synagogue that we think Jesus was in on this particular day was rebuilt in the fourth century. Um, you know, Jesus probably taught in a black basalt type synagogue and white limestone was brought in and made a very beautiful synagogue in the fourth century. But here, here it is. This, everything's going along. You know, he's teaching. He's, and, you know, the people are, you know, they're kind of amazed at his preaching. I mean, you know, they're probably sitting there saying, boy, this guy's pretty good. You know, and, and if you caught this, it says, he was teaching them as one who had authority. So I'm going to say this about myself. I preach very similar 
to the way that the Jewish rabbis spoke. I might say something like, Jesus says in Mark chapter 1, verse 15, that the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, but I'm, I'm making sure that I quote the book of the Bible, the chapter and the verse, so that you know that you can look, you can go home and look it up and say, yep, Jesus said it there. You know, because my authority is quoting the scripture. The Jewish rabbis would quote the Old Testament prophets. They would quote the Torah, you know, to give their, their thoughts some power. But Jesus just spoke. And, you know, the reason is he's God. He doesn't have to say it. God says. He can say whatever he says, and God just said it. And, and, and so that's his authority. His word is, is very, very powerful. And they're astonished at you know, this guy and how powerful he speaks. And all of a sudden, this, this guy with an unclean spirit speaks up and challenges Jesus. And he says, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now, I don't know, but I'll bet you every head in that synagogue spun on its axis to look at that guy. I would say that if somebody did that in pretty much any church around the world, every hand would look at this person pretty quickly. You know, I remember here a bunch of years ago I was preaching and we had a visitor here that, you know, he came from, I talked to him after church, so he came from a Baptist tradition where you know, they always say amen when the preacher says something that, you know, should be said amen to. But we don't come from that tradition. And one Sunday I was preaching, and all of a sudden he said, amen, good and loud. And, well, I sure looked at him. And, you know, every kind of head, head kind of looked at him. And, you know, because we're not used to that. Now, he did say amen again after that. But this statement here. It is really a pretty big statement because in one sense of the word, a battle line has been drawn. I know a lot of you read scripture, and, if, and when you do, you know, maybe kind of know something. This is something that I have noticed. In the Old Testament, you really don't hear that much about demon possession. I'm sure it's there, but you don't hear that much about it. But in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it seems like Jesus is casting out an evil spirit or an unclean spirit or a demon, you know, on every three, four pages of the Gospels. It just seems to be very, very prevalent. And I think maybe why is this, that, so in Mark chapter 1, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, Jesus is here, and Satan's got to stop this. Or people are going to go to heaven with God. And so Satan is bringing out all the guns he can. And I say a battle line. So Jesus gave up his godly glory. And this demon challenges him. Thinking, I can do this. But he can't. Jesus is true man at this time. And if he is true man, we would say he's a man that could, with the, the faith that could pick up and move a mountain or transplant a tree. But he's also true God. And so the story goes on. He cast the demon out, says, But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. Now here is where the people are really amazed. If a, let's just say, in today's day and age, if there was a demon possession, the godly person in charge of this would say something like, in the name of Jesus, I command you to get out of here. But Jesus didn't have to say that. He's God. He's Jesus. He just has to say, 
I'm going to say it a little rougher. Jesus said, be silent. He's going to say, shut up and get out of here. You know, it's with authority. And the demon fights it. But he loses. He loses. God won. And we need to keep that in our heart and in our mind. The Word of God and how powerful the Word of God is. You know, the, the Word of God has power, it has authority. The Word of God brings forgiveness, it brings life, it brings strength, it gives peace, it gives joy, it gives hope. It gives the victory over sin, death, and the grave. The Word of God. You know, let, it, let it be in your heart and mind and take it into your heart and mind in day-to-day -day life. Because Jesus' words are or is life. But there's something else I want us all to pick up about this text. Here is this demon-possessed man, and he's in a God-gathering. I'm going to call it that. He's in a God-gathering. Now you might say, why is he there? But I'm also going to say this. I think Every time we gather, you know, at least someplace around the world, there is somebody that just happens to be in a God gathering. And amazing things can happen. You know, it, it could happen here. And undoubtedly has happened here. You know, why does this person come when you know everybody's going to gather around to hear what God did? But he or she is there to hear the word of God. And when that happens, you know, we need to be ready to minister, so to speak. Um, you know, it might not always be me. You know, the person that comes in, you know, might be somebody else that's sitting in the pew that actually knows him or her, or works with him or her, or is an acquaintance with them, and you know, that might be your moment to step up and give a hand of fellowship. Because it, it's, it's great that this guy was there that day because Jesus loosened Satan's tight grip on him. And when people come for whatever reason to hear, and they hear the word of God, Amazing things can happen, and Satan's tight grip can be released. It happened to me. I'm going to say at my baptism, but in other ways, you know, often throughout my life. The same would be true for you. God's Word did amazing things in your heart and mind. God's word gave to you the forgiveness of sins, the free gift of everlasting life. That forgiveness, that peace, that joy, that hope, it's yours. So as we go forth, you know, may you go forth in that peace, that joy, that hope that God gives to you in his word. And as you go forth, go forth and, and knowing that, yes, God has called you. You might, you might be the servant that God uses in an amazing way at some point in time. But here it goes on. The crowd that just witnessed, you know, first they're impressed with his preaching style. Then they see Jesus cast out this, this demon. And they're amazed. They're in awe. And our last verse says it. This is the congregation speaking. What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. May you have the teaching in your heart and mind, and may you know 
It's an authority. In verse 28, and at once his fame spread everywhere throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. May you know what happened here on this day back when the Gospel of Mark story took place almost 2,000 years ago. And may that power and awesomeness of Jesus be in your heart and mind today and always. And be thankful. Sometimes there are interruptions. Be thankful that God interrupts your life sometimes to call you back, to put you in a right standing with him and with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's what you are. We pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into this world. We thank you that, yes, he interrupts us and calls us each and every day out of our busy lives and in our day-to-day -day life commitments, and yet he reaches in there and calls us to follow him, to know him as Lord and Savior, to know the forgiveness that we have by grace through faith and all that he has done for us. Give us the strength to flee temptation. Give us the wisdom to recognize that temptation as we go about our day-to-day -day lives. And may the Word of God and the Holy Spirit lift us up in all of us. We also pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be with the family, the moms and dads, the children. Be with our country, its leaders, and instill a godly wisdom in all. But as we go about our day-to-day -day lives, let us be ever so thankful that you watch over us and bless us. Every good and perfect gift is from you. You know, our jobs, our houses, our homes, our vehicles, our food. Thank you. And we thank you chiefly for that perfect gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is God, and his word has authority and power to reach in and change our hearts and minds and lift us up and give us that peace that only you can give to us. Go with us in all we say and do. In Jesus' name. Amen. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may our risen and victorious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ watch over you, bless you, and keep you. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.